Hey guys, how you doing? I am Dave B. I sell Chevys. I've been selling Chevys since 2004. In this video, we're gonna talk about adaptive cruise control in a 2020 Chevrolet Equinox. This is a premier model that I'm in, and with the Confidence 3 package, one of the options you will get is adaptive cruise control. Now, before we get into this video, just understand, read your owner's manual. Uh, I printed this out. There's about a dozen pages that goes over adaptive cruise control, um, how to use it, when to use it, uh, you know, things to expect while using it, warnings, everything you need to know is in the owner's manual. So make sure you read thoroughly through this and to understand exactly how this works. Uh, with that being said, I'm just going to go for a ride right now. We're going to use adaptive and we're going to see what happens to me while I'm out on the road uh, using adaptive cruise control. Let's start here on the steering wheel. These are your cruise control buttons, okay? So here at three o'clock is your button that's gonna turn it on or off. Now, when you press that button, you're gonna see on the front screen here, a little symbol come on. That lets you know that cruise control is turned on. Once it's turned on and you're going to speed you wanna, you wanna cruise at, you would press the set button. That's gonna set your cruise control. If you want it to stop or disengage cruise, you have a couple different ways you can do it. You can one, tap the brake. You can put the car in neutral. I don't know if you would do that, but you can. And you can press the button right here at nine o'clock, which is gonna cancel cruise control. Now it cancels cruise control, but it will remember the speed you were doing. So you can go ahead and hit resume, R-E-S, and go right back to where you were. You're also gonna notice there is a minus and a plus on here. Each time you press this quickly, it will take you down a mile per hour. Each time you press this up quickly, it'll bring you up a mile per hour. And if you hold one of those buttons down for a long push, it'll actually jump the speed in five mile per hour increments. So from regular cruise control, how do we get to adaptive cruise control? Well, if your vehicle is equipped with it, you basically press and hold this button on the steering wheel, and that's gonna shift you from regular cruise to adaptive cruise. Now you're also gonna notice that there's a different icon to represent adaptive cruise control. This one is the half a speedometer, but it has a vehicle there as well. That's to let you know you're an adaptive compared to regular cruise control. If we press and hold it again, it'll bring us back to regular cruise control. And now you just see the icon, which looks like a speedometer with a little arrow. For today's demonstration, let's press that. Let's go back to adaptive. We're gonna head out on the road. We're gonna set it for a speed and we're gonna see how it reacts. The speed limit on this road is 45 miles an hour, so I'm gonna get myself to 45 miles an hour, and now I'm going to hit set. So we are currently set at 45, actually 46. Let's drop it down one. So right now I have no feet on the gas or brake. We're coming up on a red light. All my indicators are lit green, so we should stop automatically. I can feel the vehicle slowing. Wow. All right, that just did everything by itself. A little last minute. This is probably something that you would have to get used to. And what also just happened there, which is in the owner's manual, when I came around that turn, the camera system did not see the truck in front of me because that truck had already turned. So I sped up quicker. It is actually pretty spooky to use. It does stop by itself though. Wow. I don't know if adaptive cruise makes sense in this sort of situation. <laughs> All right, so I just hit the brake there. You saw the forward collision alert did come on. Now, that was actually pretty good that that happened because in the owner's manual, some of the stuff it talks about is that adaptive cruise control has limited braking. So in my opinion, and again, it's just my opinion, I feel cruise control is best used on the highway. You know, you're on the highway, you're doing 60, 65, 70, whatever it is, you have nice flowing traffic that there's really no reason that traffic would be stopping. Um, you know, unless there was traffic or something like that. You know, so that's what I feel would be the best way to use adaptive cruise control. Obviously, in the situation that I'm in right now, I'm in stop and go. I have uh, lights, there's a lot of turns, and uh, that stuff, um, you know, it, it might trick up the system, if you will. This will also show you your speed there, what you're setting it to. So you can see the speed limit's 40, so I'm gonna set it to 40. Hit set, and let the car do its thing. This is like the beginning stages of cars driving themselves. Um, back there and that was a little freaky because that one Tahoe kind of moved to the left. So maybe at that point the camera thought it can accelerate, but then the other car was there stopped. Um, you know, it gave me that alert. I hit the brake to, to stop because I felt like I was getting too close and uh, 
we don't want to do anything that is going to uh, obviously get us into any bad bad situation. This car pulls out in front of me. Let's see what happens. It's slowing by itself. Okay, so it dropped me down to about 33 miles per hour, and now that he's accelerating, it's bringing me back up towards 40. Now you could also adjust your gap of how close you want to be to the car in front of you. Before you get warnings for like forward collision alert and I guess how the braking system works for the adaptive. I'm setting it to the furthest distance. Doing 39 miles an hour. No gas, no brake. Up in this portion is a camera and the camera sits kind of high. So it gets a good view of the road. One of the things I did read is that uh, let's say you're driving behind a flatbed truck and there's nothing on the flatbed It might pick up the cab of that truck, but not the back of the flatbed So that's a situation where it could get tricked up and it's you know You got to make sure that you're actively driving even though you're letting adaptive do most of the work For accelerating and braking here. We're coming up to a red light. Let's see how it handles this We're slowing down 33 30 and it's bringing us down to 15. Now check this out, once that car moves, I just had to hit the brake, it wants to accelerate because the car is no longer in the camera view. That's another thing that's in the warnings. So if you're on roads that have a lot of dips up and down or a lot of turns, the camera can lose sight of the vehicle in front of you that it's actually gauging and at that point could speed you back up, you know, not realizing that the car is there. I'm gonna reset this to 40 because that's the speed limit on this road. In a situation like this, it's more stressful, I think, to use adaptive cruise control. Again, my best use would be on a highway, of course, you know, which is where most people use regular cruise control anyway. Here, I'm gonna have to hit the brake because I'm accelerating, there's no one in front of me. It obviously doesn't see lights. It's not, you know, programmed to do anything like that. It's a camera-based system that's using the car in front of you as a uh, as a guide to how it should operate. The speed limit on this road is 50, so we're gonna get up to 50. Everything is green. And now we're pulling up to this truck and we're starting to slow down a little bit. Do you see the two symbols on the left, the green? You have a car and you have like a car within some lane lines. That is the forward collision alert and the lane departure warning. What I didn't read in the owner's manual, which I'd have to look, is does the car symbol have to be lit for the adaptive cruise control to work? That I'm not 100% sure. Um, I can tell you right now I'm doing 40 miles an hour behind this truck. It's keeping me the distance that I am. I am using no gas, no brake. Now I'm gonna pass, so I'm gonna go to the left lane and it should speed me up automatically. To get back up to 50, which is exactly what it's doing. Again, remember at any time you can turn the cruise control off, you can cancel it or you can hit the brake and stop you know, cruise. Definitely make sure when you're using this that you're actively paying attention to what's going on in the road in case you have to stop because again, in the owner's manual it states that adaptive cruise control does have limited braking. So if somebody jumps out in front of the vehicle or a car pulls out real fast, you may have to apply brake. You can't rely on a car 100% to, to stop you in time. Even the forward collision alert and emergency braking states that it, uh, it may stop you to either lessen an impact or to avoid it altogether. Right now the truck is doing all the stopping by itself. No brake pedal, no gas pedal, nothing. It's so weird. But it brought me to a full stop. That's crazy. It would definitely take some getting used to, you know, driving with it in a regular basis, uh, you know, and getting used to it in different situations and how it responds and how it reacts. Me, I'm a big fan of driving, I enjoy driving, so I like the idea of doing everything by myself and piloting the vehicle uh, the way it should be. But now let's watch, this car accelerates. And I never moved. All right, now, so I, that may be something after reading the owner's manual. 
when the truck took off, I didn't go anywhere. I just sat there. I did tap the gas pedal, and once I tapped the gas pedal, very quickly this indicator flashed blue. The uh, adaptive cruise control indicator flashed blue, and then it took off and accelerated to where it is right now. Right now it's slowing itself. I didn't do anything. Whew. Let's see what happens here when this truck takes off. If I move forward or do I have to help it along or get it started again? Which might be a good safety that you'd have to restart or your acceleration yourself. Yeah, nothing there. The seat just vibrated and I had to tap the gas, okay. What happened there was I waited, the seat vibrated. Uh, the little indicator that shows when a car is in front of you started blinking. And uh, at that point I tapped the throttle and when I tapped the throttle, it started to accelerate again. So once the vehicle comes to a full stop, you will have to tap the gas to get it to start accelerating again. One thing I was just thinking about, like right now I'm not in cruise and I didn't even realize I wasn't in cruise. So you'd have to pay attention to what mode you're in is in a situation like this. So, you know, again, I don't recommend using cruise control on, on streets where you have a lot of stop and go and things like that, even though it is adaptive. Um, because if you forget whether you're in it or not, you may forget to slow down because you think you're in adaptive cruise and you're not. So, you know, definitely if you use it, pay attention to, to what mode you're in and just be aware uh, really at all times. So, that was a quick little ride, little showcase of the adaptive cruise control. If you have any questions about it, please put in the comments down below. And uh, just, again, my professional advice, if you're using adaptive cruise control, read through your owner's manual, learn how it works. And uh, for me, I would highly recommend you reserve it for, for really freeways and interstates, highways, you know, areas where you do not have a lot of stop and go, you know, based on traffic conditions and things like that. So I uh, hope you got a little value here. I have a dealership life vlog series going. I got like 50 videos there. It's kind of all about behind the scenes at a car dealership. So if you're interested, feel free and check that out. If you like the content, of course, you know what to do on YouTube. You subscribe this way you can see more. And uh, again, if you have any questions at all, just put them in the comments down below. I'd be happy to help you out and answer all of them. Have a good one.